So proprioception is the ability that we have of feeling and knowing the position of our limbs, uh, bodily members, um, without looking at them. So for example, if I move my, my hand back, I know exactly where it is in reference to the rest of my body because of our capacity of proprioception. So uh, usually uh, when you see the word proprioception in philosophical articles or scientific articles, they only refer to the physical body, the sensory motor system. But uh, when we attend to how the body is understood in the context of Indian philosophy, we see that the ability that um, we have of paying attention to our bodily sensations um, renders the notion of proprioception, the ability to be uh, aware of certain uh, parts uh, of our body without directly looking at them, uh, the notion of proprioception becomes richer because it's not, it, 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 it it not just includes the physical parts, but it includes the more inner sensations on how we feel about those physical parts moving in certain ways. So how does it relate to phenomena such as Kundalini or the subtle body as uh, yoga uh, philosophy talks about? Well, uh, it does refer in the sense that we are aware of our body in many different layers. Um, it's, as I am saying, it's not just the physical position, but how we feel and perceive ourselves as we move our body in reference to the environment. Now, in Indian philosophy, because there was a, a, a particular practice of self of bodily self-awareness, of learning how to pay attention to your own body through your breathing, through the asana, through meditation. There are, there, there are other sensations that one can feel uh, of one's body from the inside that become more and more evident as we pay more and more attention to them. And so in my interpretation, what happens with experiences such as Kundalini, such as chakra, such as even pranayama, those are, we become aware of more minute sensations in our, in our body. The Western mind uh, tries to understand and make sense of, these descript of the descriptions of these sensations and feelings that appear in text, that appear in the descriptions of certain yoga practitioners. Um, Usually, we've, uh, we've seen how the biological discourse, the scientific discourse, uh, uh, comes into play. And so we've seen uh, along the history of yoga that when Europeans and, and even Indians educated within the European uh, uh, mindset started to make sense of these texts and these concepts of chakras kundalinis, uh, and kundalini, they wanted to see how they would correlate with the anatomy and physiology that Western thought had, had already developed. The problem in doing that is that um, you are trying to, to impose categories from a very different context and a very particular way of what the body is into a completely different context where the notion of body is very different. The way I see the notion of proprioception helping us uh, to understand um, this type of phenomena is because there are always two ways, at least two ways of seeing, of viewing the body. The subjective way and the objective way. When we understand and analyze and study the body from the scientific point of view, we are looking at the body as something that is uh, um, as an object, as an object of study. We look at it from the third person perspective. And so uh, the type of this perspective, when um, trying to understand the Kundalini, they will, this will tell us, oh, well, when someone is having this experience of Kundalini, this and this and this is happening in the physiological sense, in the biological sense, this, um, 
uh, areas of the brain are lighting up, these areas of the body are being stimulated, these organs are activated, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that doesn't mean that that type of discourse encompasses the whole reality of the phenomena because we have the subjective experience of the body. And so if we look and take that perspective of the body from the first person point of view, we see that then the, the very same phenomenon become uh, uh, a thing with many layers. And so then we encounter the discourses of Kundalini as a goddess, of Kundalini as this um, very um, intense uh, experience uh, of sensations along the spine and all these visualizations of the chakras, etc. That is, in my opinion, impossible really to reduce to what is happening at the physiological level while someone is having that experience. Because we are dealing with two levels of this course, two levels of experience that are simply uh, both making their own, um, they are complementing each other. They are not necessarily counterposing each other. So yes, the Kundalini, it, we could say is a physiological, biological phenomena, but it is also a type of experience that uh, phenomenologically, and that means uh, it's a type of experience that shows to our consciousness, to the, to, to, um, to our awareness, other uh, different narrativity, different uh, sensations, different feelings, different thoughts that reconfigure our way of even perceiving our own bodies, our own selves. It is not just a goddess. It is not just the product of a certain uh, neurophysiological processes going on. It is both. It's just that if we look from the uh, objective perspective, we will be using a certain type of discourse. But if we uh, take the uh, phenomenological first person point of view, then we encounter this other type of discourse. And they are not, they are not opposed to each other. Uh, they are only opposed to each other when we try to make each discourse the only valid one.